Welcome to Code Rush, feature of the week. So Mark, what have we got this week? This week I'm going to show you code cleanup and organize members. Okay, go oh. tidy some code. Yeah, it's, it has to do with this button right up here on the Code Rush toolbar. It says it runs code cleanup for the active document. But what is code cleanup? Let's take a look. A fair question. Inside the Code Rush menu, uh, bring up the options page. And if you come up here and you just type in uh, clean, for example, mm -hmm. you'll see code cleanup options for both C Sharp and for Visual Basic. We can, okay. we can click on code cleanup and you can see there are a number of different rules that are in here. Uh, as, and some of the rules have checks next to them and some do not. If you click on a rule, uh, you can see a preview of what that rule is going to do. For example, here's a sort namespace references, where we're sorting the references. Uh, sure. Here's remove unused namespace references. And so you get a before and after picture here. By the way, this highlighting is because of the search here. I'll just clear that so we don't see that highlighting. Um, and, and that's basically it. That's what code cleanup does. Um, Specifically, though, there are a couple options I want to look at uh, for this demo. Um, one of them is the apply visibility style uh, rule. And this apply visibility style rule will basically will, will take whatever setting I have with regards to visibility that can either be represented explicitly or implicitly like this, and it'll convert it over. So if I check yes to this, apply visibility uh, apply visibility style, and then I come down to this page, programming style, and I specify my visibility modifiers to use either implicit or explicit, it'll then use the settings on this page to change my code in the background. So I'm going to click OK. Right now, my, my notice my visibility is to use implicit. So I'm going to click OK on this. And you can see that I've got several explicitly declared members in here, right? Yep. Private keyword is there, but it doesn't have to be there. I also sure. have some that are without that as well in this code. So we'll clean all that up. We'll hit this button to run the code cleanup. And we should see this one go away right down here and all the others as well. And there it is. So now we've, we've taken all those private keywords out of there because they're not needed. And that's what our setting was. If I undo that and we go back into the Code Rush Options dialog and we change the setting to use explicit modifiers like this, and we scroll down to about that same location in the code, or at least a location where I've got both a private and one without, this time when we run it, we should see the word private showing up just before the void here. Oh, did I not hit OK? Let me hit Undo a second. Code Rush, Options, Use Explicit. Oh, I did it for type visibility, but I meant <laughs> to do it for member visibility. Fair I enough. Member visibility to use explicit modifiers. So let's do it again. We'll go ahead and click that like that. And then we'll clean up. And now you see it's added the there we go. keyword. Excellent. So just a quick summary there, Mark. We've, we've got this programming style page, both uh, VB and C Sharp, so you can do things independently slightly different if you want to, which will let you set, and, and we would normally sort of look at this page as how would you like Code Rush to generate your code when you're using maybe templates or, or things like that. But what we're saying is that not only is it used in the creation or the expansion, I should say, of templates, but it's also used in this code cleanup function, uh, function when we're applying visibility and, and similar structures like that. So it's going to take a code base that maybe you've got from somewhere else and apply your coding standards to it. Right. That's right. Now, another one that's kind of similar when we're talking about this idea of implicit and explicit is using uh, is use of the var keyword for variable mm -hmm. declarations. Yep. And if we click apply variable declaration style here, you can see what's happening here. The var keywords here, we're going to change it over to string if that's what my options are for that. So I'm going to click OK on that. I'm going to come back down to programming style. And I'm going to look at uh, my local declaration style. And I'm going to change this to use implicit. Or, uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to change it to use explicit instead. Uh, and the reason yep. I'm going to do, I'm going to, it would, or I'm going to keep it at where it is. And uh, that's because I can see right here, I'm definitely, definitely using 
uh, an implicit sure. variable there, so I want to see a change there. So I'm going to click OK. I'm going to hit undo from the last code cleanup just here so we get it back to the original where we are. And by the way, over I've got the same file, a copy of the same file opened up here so that you could take a look at it and see it in both sides here. So you can see what's happening on here sure. as well for comparisons. Um, so let's go in and we're going to hit cl code cleanup now. Uh, over here, we're going to select this. By the way, it's not available over here because this uh, the settings for this file, uh, or the property settings for this, the build action is do not compile. Okay. Okay. So I set this to be not part of the project. That's why we don't see the button over here. When we come over here and we're in source code that is part of the project, uh, then we can run cleanup on it. Fair so, enough. Yeah. So we're here and now we're expecting to see some kind of change on this line. So I'm going to click the code cleanup button. And there, yeah, it's given that. To that's us. quite that's clear. Right. And of course, it supplied your previous item of removing private from several methods as well. So all this stuff works together. Exactly. So these are the options, and you can explore these options by clicking them, uh, seeing which rules you like, and you can even change the order of the rules by moving up or down. For example, here I've landed on use expression bodies. If you prefer the terseness of expression bodies, you can have your code automatically changed over to use those. So it's very, very powerful. The last thing I want to show you is organize members. If we select organize members like this, and we come up here and we search for the uh, organize members options page right here, this is where we can specify the rules for how we want to organize the source code. Okay. Now, I should say that when you first look at this page, it might look a little bit daunting. Right. There's a lot of different rules and it's not entirely clear what's going on and how everything's going to look. And what I recommend you do instead of coming in here and just saying, OK, I'll go with default or style cop, unless you want to try those and just see how they work. Instead, click the new button like this and create your own scheme. I'm going to call this uh, Mark's scheme like this. And this is a great way to learn how this works. Yeah. We're going to come in here, we're going to add a rule. What, and this rule is going to be up at the top, which is basically saying, what do I want to put at the top of my file? Well, if you're like me, you want to put your fields up at the tops. In fact, I might do constants instead, actually. I might come in here and say, let's put my constants up at the top. Um, uh, something along those lines. So we'll put our, our node, con our, our constants up there at the top. We'll sort them by ascending order. And then uh, I'll call this rule constants like this. Okay. So we've got a, a definition here called constants, and it's going to grab everything in the group by section that you've got there. So in this case, it is just constants. And then it's going to go down and, and use this sort by to determine the order of those things it's collected. Exactly. So we're going to sort by name on those constants. And so that, that part's good. Let's add another rule. And uh, this time, let's grab our fields. And we're going to sort our fields by ascending. In fact, we might actually want to sort first by, not by name, but by, for example, static. And secondarily, by name, like that. And so we'll okay. see all our static property or sta static uh, fields first, followed by our instance fields. So we'll call this rule yep. fields like this. Sure. We're going to add one more rule. And let's just call this one members. So we're going to say members. And we're going to just put all members together. And we'll sort by name. Mm -hmm. And so with those rules, I'm going to click OK on this. And I don't think I actually have any constants yet in here. So let me just add a couple constants. I'm going to come in here and using the the, the um, the, the Q template, I'm going to create uh, some different constants here. Uh, um, max count, for example, over here, make it 100. So that was the Q template right there. I might do another constant of uh, type string, QS for constant of type string. We're going to call this um, the, uh, uh, the, the model. And uh, we'll say uh, it's the marks model, like that. <laughs> And uh, so we've got a couple constants in here. I'm going to uh, uh, take these, uh, put these in reverse order here, and we'll copy these to the, the clipboard and bring them over here after button vector click so we keep our files relatively in sync. Mm -hmm. And then yep. uh, <laughs> let's come in and we'll 
do a code cleanup. And if we check that button to organize our members, we should now see our constants up at the top right there. We should see yep. our, our fields uh, as well. Immediately and afterwards, see, yeah. You can see that the fields are in alphabetical order, right? Constants yep. are also in alphabetical order, um, followed, by, uh, uh, followed by our members in alphabetical order. All modifiers down. We've got a couple properties here, followed by uh, methods, and mm -hmm. then probably more properties later on. Right. Okay. So, okay, not bad. Let's refine it. Let me hit undo a second and let's go in code rush options one more time. And let's refine the rule. Let's uh, change this from member uh, to properties. So I'm going to find all my properties and let's also do that same thing where we sort by static first and then let's add a rule to sort by name. Okay. okay. So we'll grab all our properties and we'll give this uh, uh, rule name the uh, the props and we'll add one more rule uh, for the methods like that and uh, and we'll grab the methods and we'll sort those do the same thing here where we sort first by static and then add a secondary rule to sort by name so mark one thing that occurs to me here is that you've gone from all members to properties and methods and that's fair enough you're going to get a slightly different sort as a result but but what happens if you don't you know, have a group that captures some kind of thing. If you, if you didn't have an item in place, so maybe maybe your constants weren't something you thought of. Is it just gonna? It can't can't delete those. Obviously, they're important to the code. So I'm assuming it's going to sort them to a, a location just by default. Well, let's let's give that a try and see what happens. So I've grabbed props and methods, right? Let's mm -hmm. see let's see what happens. Let's create a uh, an event inside here. Sure. Okay, and we'll see what happens with our event and. Uh, uh, Van Handler will just say this, uh, my event. And I use the EV template to get that out there very quickly. So I've got yep. my event in here right now. And I think we've got a constructor in here too as well. There's our constructor. Let's do code cleanup and see what we get. So we've got this. We've got all of our static so properties. Constants, fields, static properties, yeah. We've got our instance properties next. We have uh, our static methods in alphabetical order. Yep. Then we have our instance methods in alphabetical order. Mm -hmm. And we get to the very end. So that's the okay. End. And the two pieces it didn't catch, it just sorts, it just puts them at the bottom. So they've basically stayed in their pre existing order, but have been moved to the bottom after the things that you've effectively prioritized. Exactly. So you can use this to just say, hey, I only want these things at the top, and I don't care about the order of the rest of the items at the bottom. Sure. Okay. And that's that's really good. So that's a great way of bringing in an external code base or, or part of one at least, maybe some sample code that you've got that you're planning to use um, and, and then just sorting it into your own company's code style. Or perhaps just, here's another thought, maybe uh, you and a colleague don't quite have the same mental model, the same way of looking at code. So you can pull their code in through source control, be looking at you know the standard project and switch the code into your mental model, albeit temporarily, because you, you don't want to constantly switch back and forth between two styles. Your source control would have a nightmare with that. But but it would be great to just take their code, get a look at it, figure out, okay, that's what they were trying to do, and then put it back where it was, just by either yes. undoing, or perhaps you've got a copy of their code style as well. That's right, Rory. And just to sum up, I want to show you the key pieces, the key options pages that you want to be looking at. One mm -hmm. is code cleanup. This is where we have the option to turn organized members on or off and to individually apply other options for cleaning up the source code. It's good for cleaning up your old source code as well as source code you're getting from other people so that it, it's, it, it is easier for you to read. Um, the organized members is another page, right? This is where you can set up your rules for how you want members to be sorted inside the file. Yep. And the uh, third options page, that is a key, is the programming style options page. And uh, both code cleanup and programming style options are available in both C-sharp and in Visual Basic. Okay, uh, a couple other things to note as well. You, we've obviously used this from the toolbar at the top there applying to the current file. Um, code cleanup is also available from the project level as well in Solution Explorer. If you right click the project, you've got a cleanup project option. And you can also execute organize members as an independent action uh, from the usual code rush menu. Um, I think they're both available from that. So the context menu within code, control period is my own personal choice of doing that. Oh, and indeed in the code rush menu as well. 
So a lot of ways to execute these wonderful bits of functionality, um, all sorts of ways to organize your code into what for you will be the easiest to parse, the at least cognitively taxing version of this code. Well, in any case, Mark, that's a fantastic range of functionality. Thank you very much. We will see you next week on Code Rush Feature of the Week. For more Feature of the Week videos, click one of the two video links on screen or select from our playlist. Download and learn more about Code Rush from the DevExpress website. And be sure to subscribe to our channel to receive all the latest Code Rush feature videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.